Yo, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be looking at some funky deep house in the style of Ruse. They're a UK duo who just released their debut album on Piv. In case you've been living under a rock, Piv is a label from the Netherlands run by Prunk. It focuses on house, deep house, minimal kind of thing and is definitely one of the biggest labels in its style over the last kind of five years or so. So Ruse just put out their debut album Journey and I've made a track which you heard in the intro inspired by the sound. I'm going to show you today how I put that together and break down all the elements that go into making it. If you like the track that you can hear playing in the background, it's a new one of mine. There's a link in the description to Beatport and Spotify if you want to go and support it. Much appreciated. And as always, you can download the project files for this video. There's a link in the description to Patreon, which is one of the best ways you can support the channel. And make sure I keep bringing you these videos every week and let's get into Ableton and make some house music. All right so here we are inside Ableton and this is a project that I've put together in the style of Ruse. So a funny story actually I was making a completely different video and I'd just been listening to the promo of their LP, their new album on Piv. And I was like, this is kind of heading in that direction. So why not make a video on that? So then I kind of went for in a deep dive into their album and like, I kind of just tried to get a broad idea of what they were doing in the album, um, the different sounds they were using. And then I didn't really use any track specifically but I just kind of went for the vibe, let's say. I don't know if I nailed it exactly, but I think it's definitely in the ballpark. Uh, one thing that I noticed in their tracks that they do a lot is using like pretty heavy vocal samples. A lot of um, quite well-known ones actually, which is kind of, I don't know, but they're flipping them in a kind of, which is, you know, often artists are digging a bit deeper, but they are kind of flipping them in a different way than they've been used before maybe. Anyway, the vocal samples often are really quite predominant in their tracks. Um, and kind of give them a lot of the character. Lots of classic kind of house monologues or kind of like old school diva-ish vocals. Um, yeah, really cool, fun sounds. Anyway, let's jump in and get going. So we've got a kick here that I just sampled from one of their tracks. You know, it's just a kick. Pretty chunky. Um, it's got like a big kind of attack on it. It had a hi-hat on top of it, so I've just brought the high shelf down a little bit. Just to kind of mellow out that click at the start. And this is the pattern we're playing. So it's just a 4-4 four, four with this little double hit every second bar. It's just helping to the helping with the groove. And I've just lowered the velocity on this hit and shortened these notes a little bit so that the kicks aren't running into each other too much. Now, next thing I've got some kick fills. So I noticed that they did these quite a bit. So it's the same kick and I've just shortened the release, added a little bit of attack so it's not so hard and I'm automating this EQ here to just pull out some of the sub so when it kind of hits and drops there's a little bit more impact. So we'll hear that in context in a minute. Okay, claps. So what I kind of heard in this album is that they had like a really housey kind of like yeah like really cool fun housey vibe lots of combinations of claps and snares so i went for this classic 707 clap and then this one which is more of like a hand clap that's coming from east end dubs and you'll see i've got some kind of different notes in the midi which is adding some groove and swing So they're kind of playing off each other. And then we've got a snare on top and it's just playing on every second beat. And that's also coming from East End Dubs. And that's just got a little bit of reverb on it, my standard one. So together with the kick. So already kind of getting a bit of groove going in there, right? Now onto the hats. So we've got this kind of main closed hat, also from ECN Dubs, a little bit of uh, velocity randomization, very subtle, only set to four. And this is the pattern we're playing, just like on the offbeat with this extra kind of groove hit here. And the velocity is down on that one just to kind of create that groove. You'll notice here I've got 
MPC Swing 64, which is like pretty heavy swing. I noticed lots of their tracks had very heavy swings on them. And that's the universal swing groove that I'm, or groove template that I'm using across the track. Now we've got these shuffle hats. And that's a 909 closed hat and I've just kind of EQ'd up some of the bottom a bit so it's not as heavy as it would be otherwise. Again, got a little bit of randomization on that and I've got a bit of pan randomization so each time it plays it's just getting slightly panned left or right. That just helps to kind of set it in the panorama. Uh, now I've got this, I've called it an open disco hat. It's just one of these kind of like, uh, you'll, hear, you'll know it when I play it. So just emphasizing that note there and I've just kind of used it pretty sparingly every four bars to kind of add some interest and differentiation in the loop, basically extend out the loop. Uh, now we've got a little shaker. Just it's really like a noise kind of hat um, shown browser and it's just kind of it's, it's playing 16ths and it's just adding a little bit more pace to the groove so very subtle in there and now lastly in the hats we've got two open hats and the first one sounds like this and that is panned to the right and then this one sounds like this that one is panned to the left so this is a 909 and this one is a bit different to a 909. Basically I want them to be different enough that they separate from each other and it's kind of giving some width and some... It's just making the hat sound a bit... the open hat sound a bit more interesting. And to help with that I've got the... playing slightly different patterns here. Alright, so all of the hats and claps so far sounds like this so you can hear this with those snares claps the little kind of not random but you know the little 16th note hats there's already starting to be quite a bit of like call and response in the drums and they're pretty simple now what i heard in the tracks was that was kind of really giving them this like slightly old school housey vibe was some kind of like breakbeat loops and some kind of well, maybe like something that was low in the mix but a little bit more real so like what i've done is i've taken a disco loop and a breakbeat loop and this is the disco one so play this from the start with the break So you can hear it kind of helps to thicken up the drums a bit but also provides like a little bit more humanization and a bit more kind of groove. What I've done is I've quantized that and then set the universal swing this MPC 16, uh, MPC 16 and it's set to 64 and then I've done the same thing on this one. Nice. So I mean those are, you know, those could be anything. You could just get a couple of top loops, you could get a couple of breakbeat loops, anything really. Just something subtle in the background to give it a bit more vibe. And I felt that, that although they're, they are subtle, it really helped to elevate the percussion and the drums. Uh, I don't think I've even done any, I haven't even done any mixing on this. Um, everything just kind of worked when I got the kick and the bass and to the right volume. They could obviously be tightened up. I'm just sending it to a little bit of reverb. So this is just part of my standard template. You can check a video up here if you want to check out my standard template. I walk all the way through it and you can also download that. Okay, so let's have a look at the bass line. This is the pattern. Now, I can't remember which track, but I think I copied this off one of their tracks. D sharp minor, little fills, little groove, but it's pretty simple. And that seemed to be like in this kind of music, say someone like Rossi has like quite complex bass lines actually and these guys seem to have a bit more simple a bit groovier a little bit more subdued bass lines i would say but with 
the kick. So you can see this is playing like the kick's playing here and here. So it's like quite powerful. It's playing this like offbeat bass line, which gives a lot of drive. And then it gets a bit groovier and it goes. So it's kind of like going in between groovy and driving, which helps to give space for a bunch of the other elements. So the bass with the drums sounds like this. And you'll notice that those bass 16th notes are kind of working with the snares and stuff. All of this, all of these things are kind of trying to do like call and response or matching the groove, you know. Let's have a look at the synthesis for this. It's just wavetable. I've got a bit of sub to beef up the low end. Um, that seemed to be something that they were doing. They had quite heavy sub in their bass lines. Then I've got a sawtooth, another sawtooth, which is just tuned up seven semitones that sounds like this without the filter. Let's take off this overdrive. So the overdrive isn't doing much at this point, but with the filter and the overdrive just adds some more harmonics. It's subtle, but it just kind of beefs it up and helps it to poke through the mix a little bit. Um, this is quite, so it's very subby, right? And then I'm using envelope two to just add a little bit of pluckiness to it. i take that away. So a nice driving groove. Um, we're at 128 BPM, by the way, and the key is D sharp minor. All right, let's have a look at the melodic elements. So we've got this nice kind of Juno style chord stab or chord. Which is something that I noticed they had in a lot of their tracks. It's quite nice and housey and that seemed to be something that they were really going for. Quite an old school vibe. I did have this playing a more complex pattern with these other chords here but I felt like it actually worked better when I took those out and used different elements. Their, their melodic elements in their tracks seem to be made up with quite a lot of different things like playing off each other but I'll show you what that sounds like. But that just kind of meant that I was fixed into that groove and it didn't give enough space for other elements to to join in the party. All right, uh, now we've got this square pluck, which actually what I was originally, this was just like a happy accident. I was originally f trying to find a alternative sound to play these here. You can see in this MIDI, I've kind of got those original chords in there. And then I just happened upon the sound that didn't work for that, but was quite cool. So and that gave me a whole, whole new idea. So really cool sound and that's kind of playing throughout but it's taking up quite a bit of space so here i've just simplified it to make room for some other elements that come in and here i've just kind of added this extra fill at the end here cool i should probably drop out a kick here Now let's have a look at the synthesis on that. So it's just a preset from Wavetable, Poly Juno Square. And then there's some interesting stuff going on here. Let's take off the delay, the chorus, uh, this, uh, I'll just take off this LFO and this bit reduction. So this is how it sounds. Cool. Now the bit reduction is just helping to kind of crunch it up a bit. Makes it, it gives it that kind of like robot-y kind of sound. It's reminiscent of Daft Punk for me. Uh, the EQ here. So I just boosted this little frequency here. If I turn that off, actually I can turn that back on. So what I'm trying to do is just get like a little bit of movement in there and create some like resonant peaks that are moving around. So pretty cool. Uh, then the chorus just helps to spread it out, create some stereo width. This is Tal Chorus LX. It's free. Download it and use it. It's great. Nice. And then a bit of delay. It helps to kind of sit it into the groove. Nice one. Now I've got this organ, which 
I think also was playing a bit more of a complex pattern, but I just simplified it and had it playing less frequently. It's made up of two layers, two presets from live, perky organ and e-piano whirly, and I've got some tantra on it. So let's hear it without the tantra, and together, and in the groove. Cool, but with the Tantra, this is the preset called Fluids. So it just gives it a bit more interest, texture, vibe, which is exactly what its job is. And we can hear it here without the square pluck playing on top. Nice, quite vibey, housey kind of sound. I've got a string. This is just a string sample from my sample pack. Link up here if you want to grab that. New one in the works. Classic housey business, just playing it over two octaves and I'm automating in the volume here. Not much to say. It's a string. It's almost essential in any house track. Now I've got a couple of like random stabs here. Nice vibey one. Also from my sample pack and also from my sample pack. So let me just turn off all this other stuff and we can kind of hear that in context. Nice, good sounds in there. Uh, let's have a look at the next element, which is like a really cool kind of uh, live sounding clavinet or e-piano or something. So this is like a longer loop. Cool stuff. I noticed that they were using kind of like real samples in their, or like real instruments in their tracks. Um, maybe it's like a saxophone or a piano or a clavinet or an e-piano or something like well, e-piano is like a Rhodes or a Wurlitzer or something like that. As you can hear that sample sounds a little bit lame, um, doesn't have much vibe, so I added on this amp and a chorus. And I've also got one that's in the wrong key and pitched it down a little bit and I've quantized it and put the same groove on it. So with that processing, chorus just spreads it out a bit and this key crunch just helps to make it crunchy. Also adds quite a lot of brightness to it so it kind of sticks out in the mix. Really nice vibe on that. Um, and then I've got these two which are kind of like fills from the loop. So those ones really kind of work with the groove and then these two are kind of, yeah, fills, let's hear them. Really nice. And this one is kind of even more, I guess maybe you'd call it like a run. I don't know. Nice, really cool stuff. All right, let's move on to the vocals. So vocals, as I said at the start, big part of some of their tracks and often using like quite well-known um, vocals from old house tracks, old hip house tracks, um, or old stuff like Thelma Houston maybe. Um, yeah, some, some pretty well-known stuff. I searched for things on Splice and whatnot. So I came up with this one, which I think is from a tour room house pack or something so really cool uh, let me show that in the browser and we can listen to it Turn your lights down low. so what i've done to it to kind of make it sound the way it does is i've taken out some of the highs it makes it feel a bit like more old school but sampled i've added on this chorus tell chorus lx to spread it out also give it some vibe and I've got this delay, which is pretty cool. What that's doing, it's only coming on in this section here, which is kind of like a pre-chorus or something like that. Um, and then I'm using the dry wet here. So let's hear it in context. So 
so it just makes it a bit more vibey in this part here i'm also automating the filter in here so it opens up and then it's like as open as it's going to be in the break so it's kind of it's doing this delay <laughs> nice and then what i've done at the end here which i was kind of like a little happy accident but what i've done because this is playing the whole time but i've just got the dry wet down it's actually like the delay is happening here but it's not being it's not audible because the dry wet's down so what i've done is i can play this so if i had the delay up here it would be a bit busy and a bit messy right but what i've done is just play the delay after this vocal's gone, after the drop. And then I'm just automating this to bring the delay out again, because it would carry on for a little bit longer. Cool stuff. And then I'm just using this part here as a little fill at the end here. I really like that. Um, the first thing I started messing around with was some vocal textures and this is just a sample uh, from a loop. So it's kind of working call and response with the melodic elements as well, just helping to get some vibe. I noticed that they did this kind of thing in a few different tracks. Uh, then the first thing I was trying was some kind of vocal chops. It didn't end up being like a hook, but it did end up being kind of cool. So let's have a listen to the original. So that's what it sounds like. Um, I've just used simpler here in slice mode and then moved the playheads around to get the, one, the bits that I want. Just adding a bit of differentiation there. So let's hear those vocal textures in context. Just really adding to the vibe and the call and response. Now I've got this other one, other vocal here, which is just chopped up parts of a vocal loop, a spoken word kind of thing. And I'm just EQing it to make it feel a bit kind of old, a bit like I was trying, you can see here this telephone vocal preset, but it sounded better when I just did it with some EQ. Play jazz rhythm. So in context. Play jazz rhythm. So in the break, they start kind of doing call and response together with these two main vocals. Very nice. And those are kind of chopping and changing between which one is playing and then at the break they play together right so it just kind of helps to create differentiation in the track all right let's have a look at the effects group we've got a crash 909 classic stuff and i've got a couple of little crash fills so you can hear that this crash fill is working together with the kick fill and again here uh, then I just created a little riser with, uh, this is like a synth one shot that I reversed. And it's just playing over two octaves. And then what I've done to create this riser, which by the way, sounds like this, is I've added a limiter, which helps to just bring out the tail so that there's a bit more sustain on the samples, because as you can see, they're quite thin at the start. Then I'm using this auto filter to kind of sweep up and then back down. So without the auto filter. It helps to give it this kind of cool metallic wow kind of sound. Auto pan just pans it from left to right. Chorus. So this is like a supporting sound. It's just adding vibe. So it doesn't really matter if it's like too present in the front. 
I'm using this erosion to add a little bit of bit crushing kind of vibe to it. And I've got this echo, which kind of helps to turn into a transition rather than just a sweep up. Now I've got a reverse crash, which is one from my sample pack. Here I'm using, it was actually a crash from my sample pack and I've reversed it and it's got some delays and stuff on it, which sounds quite cool when it's reversed, but I didn't feel like it had enough sustain coming into it. So I did the same limiting trick as I did here. And then I cut out quite a bit of the lows and just tamed the highs a little bit. So that's just helping it. So it's audible kind of here when it's coming in. I mean, I'm just sending it to some reverb. And for these ones, what I've done is I've just kind of cut off the end so it doesn't get as bright. And that just helps to kind of put more emphasis on this one and less emphasis on these ones. So in the arrangement here, I'm automating this auto filter, turning it on at this point, kind of this is the bit that I was calling like a pre-chorus. I guess I could put it in, put in the marker here. Yeah. So the drums get filtered down here. Well, they're actually getting filtered up a little bit. So the filter kicks in, they're getting filtered up a little bit, then they come up all the way and get filtered down a little bit. So we can hear that in context. Just listen to the whole break and how it works. Ah, one last thing I just heard there. Okay, this is pretty cool actually. So I've taken this vocal and just sent like the last word, rhythm and drum to this send here. And that is this one. So just that word is getting sent and then it's got no feedback. So it just plays once. Let's hear it. Play jazz, rhythm, rhythm. Cool. So it kind of like repeats the last word. And then this one, is adding delays to that first delay. Play jazz rhythm. rhythm. The drums. So I'm just trying to create a bit of differentiation and interest in this section here. Play jazz rhythm. So cool. So that's how I've made some funky deep house music inspired by Ruse and their new Journey album out now on Piv. If you want to grab this project file, it's available for download. Link in the description goes to Patreon, one of the best ways that you can support the channel. And there's loads of project files over there. So check it out. All right, guys, what do you think? Funky stuff. How did I do? Let me know in the comments. And if you're looking for something to watch next, then check out this one. I think you're going to like it. Well, that's it for me today. We'll catch you next time. Peace.